Okay, we're going to look at the laser airborne depth sander now, which is called LATS. And traditionally, if you wanted to work out the depth of the seabed near the coast there for shipping lanes for safety, you would have actually gone around with boats, had some sort of a sonar device where you sent down sound waves there, down that way, and you listened to reflections or the echoes, and you could work out how deep the ocean bed was there or the seabed was in those different areas. So to do that, you're basing it on the fact that you know the speed of sand in water, speed of sand in water, and you would times by the time delay between it going down and coming back up received to a microphone, all right? And that would be the distance travelled. The velocity of sand in water times by the time delay, that would tell you the distance travelled down and back again. And you would halve that to work out the depth. The trouble with this is the boats are fairly slow and sand is fairly slow through the water. So it's going to take a long time to actually map just the coastal regions around Australia to check for the shipping lanes. So another way of doing this was developed here uh, with lads, it's uh, to use a plane there which shoots down a laser beam and does a similar sort of job. So let's have a look at that. Now in this case, the plane actually sends down two beams. One's a red laser beam. And they use that one there and that actually goes down and reflects back. And that'll give you an idea of the height of the plane. So they try and keep the height of the plane roughly at about 500 metres at a similar altitude. Okay. But the real beam that we're actually trying to get the depth of the water from is the green beam. So there'll be a green pulse that's sent down. And that green bolts will do two things. One is it's going to reflect off the water surface. Now that's going to scatter in lots of directions, by the way, off the water surface. And a proportion will come back along that line and come back to us as a beam. Okay, can you receive that there in the plane somewhere? But part of the beam will go into the water and be refracted. So it gets into the water there. And again, it will scatter off this sea blade and be set in all directions. But again, some of that will come back along that line come back through here and you'll get a returning beam there. Now it's the important thing to notice here that we know the time delay between the two beams here, T1 and T2. That time delay there can be used to work out how deep the water is at this area here. So the time delay under the water here, that's the extra distance travelled by this beam here while it's underwater. That's the depth that you're going to get for the ocean bed at that point. So the extra distance travelled here by the beam going down and back again underwater would be the velocity of the light in water times by the time delay between the two beams. And don't forget that time delay would be T2 take T1. And that's the time it is underwater here. So if you did that here, that's the distance travelled down and back. Now to get the depth then, we need to halve that because it's going down and back again. So halving that will give us the total depth there. Okay. That's the total depth in the, in, of the water there. So it's a, it's a fairly simple equation. Now it should be pointed out here that the plane pulses down green beams of light. So it sends down pulses one after the other. And this red beam re is really just to keep the height. So you'll find that this actually will send down multiple pulses there and get multiple dots in one go. And I've got a little video clip there that shows you this. Okay. Get infrared pulses per second from a stabilised platform. This infrared output is doubled to produce an additional green beam which propagates well in clear ocean or coastal waters. The infrared pulses are emitted vertically from the aircraft and reflect from the sea surface to provide an initial surface reference. A scanning mirror directs the green pulses to form a rectangular pattern across the survey track. The green pulses are reflected from the sea surface and the sea floor. The time difference between the surface return and the seafloor return gives the depth of the water. Returning green photons from the laser pulse are collected by the scanning mirror and directed to the green receiving telescope, which amplifies the photons to produce a green return signal. The returning infrared photons are detected by the infrared receiver and converted to the infrared signal. So the little clip is from Vision Systems there, which is part of the LADS Corporation. A technology park at the levels. So when you look at this, the main thing to be aware of is that you're going to have a laser beam shot at the bottom of the plane that's going to give you a return signal. The red beam is not in the course but it's used to keep the altitude at about 500 metres. Now that red beam is then transferred into a green beam as a by a splitting process. Now for the green pulse, that's the key part that's in the course. You need to be conscious that it's about a metre across when it gets down to the water surface. But when it strikes the surface, some of that's going to be returned off reflection from the water surface. And it's important to note that the water surface is a little bit rough and that allows the scattering to go in all directions 
because normally a beam coming down here would just reflect off in that direction. But because it's a rough surface here, you're getting scattering in several directions and some part of the beam will come back and give you a time delay for the first beam. Okay? Now part of this beam also goes into the water surface here and comes back along that path, having reflected off the ocean bed. Now that also scatters in all directions, and that's why you get some of it coming back along that same path, and you get a time delay between the two beams while it's underwater. So as long as you know how long it is underwater for, it's easy to work out how much further the second beam travels, and therefore work out the depth. Okay? The spots are roughly about 10 metres apart, and it sweeps out over 240 metres, so it's a big path you're doing in one go here. Okay? And you get a depth for each of those sections of the seabed. It requires a very intense beam because you're going to get spreading over a metre and you're going to get scattering on the surface of the water, losing energy, where it's scattered in all directions, and scattering off the surface. And you also get some absorption in the water due to suspended silt. And it's important you get enough light coming back to the sensor here so you actually get a registration. There'll be a limit to how deep this can go because obviously uh, water, you know, light doesn't penetrate water forever. And they use green because green is a good colour to actually penetrate water and get good depth out of it. So this is one simple answer you could give. The plane shoots the laser beam off the water surface and some reflects back there, while some enters the water and reflects from the bed, and the extra distance is the velocity in water times by the time delay, and therefore the depth would be half of that. So uh, the other part of the syllabus or the statement is that why does it use a high intensity beam? So a high intensity beam uh, needs to be used because we need to get a small amount reflected back to the plane and you get an awful lot of loss there due to uh, scattering uh, off the water surface and also off the seabed where it spreads and you'll get some absorption occurred by suspended uh, particles, you can say seaweed if you want, and because of that you need to get a very high beam. To avoid the eye damage to people you'll find that the beam is spread through a lens there so it is actually really wide when it hits the surface. So you will find I'm giving you some examples here. You should be able to work out the depth of the seabed, the height above the water, and the distance the aircraft travels. So you've got those questions there you can work on. There's some solutions. It's important to realise that the plane only moves about 0.26 millimetres in this particular example, and that's why you can guarantee that that laser is coming back along the same path and getting to your sensor. That's not going to miss the sensor. Okay, thank you.